Welcome everybody who has joined so far. Um, my name is Laura Lee Charles and I'm the program manager for continual engagement at Interise. Um, you're probably very familiar with my emails at this point. <laughs> but Interise is the curriculum provider for um, all of our programming actually across the country. We work with the Small Business Administration to deliver the Emerging Leaders Program. Um, and we also work with other various partners through city and state agencies, business associations, nonprofit organizations across the country. So the same curriculum that you completed in class um, is present in close to 80 communities across the country. And we now have an alumni network of well over 4,000 business owners. Um, so you are in very good company. Uh, we have a lot of programming that is available to you um, as you implement your growth plan. Most of you, I'm sure, are already participants in the alumni network online. It's probably how you heard about this program. Um, and we do monthly strategy roundtable calls, um, ask an expert discussions online, and we're starting to do more of these webinars, which we're really excited about. So um, thank you, Ken, for being one of our pioneers in this new webinar space for us. Um, also just want to give a little plug for our national event that is coming up in September, September 10th through 12th. It's called the uh, Streetwise Summit. And it's an opportunity for you to, to meet some of each other, um, some of this national alumni network from across the country. Um, we have two days of fantastic programming, breakout sessions led by uh, many of our instructors. Um, we're going to be doing a procurement panel, um, you know, being located, the, the event is in Alexandria, Virginia, so being located right out of D.C., there will be some good opportunities for conversations around contracting, some great networking opportunities. Um, so take a look at that online, interise.org slash summit. And yes, I would love to introduce Ken Sevick, who is hosting our Facebook for Small Business webinar today. He um, is a business coach with Action Coach and also our instructor for the Emerging Leaders Program in Pittsburgh. Um, and he's been teaching there for three years since the program started on the ground. Um, and I will turn it over to you, Ken. You can take it away. Thanks, Laura Lee. Um, hello, everybody, and welcome to the webinar. Thanks for tuning in. Um, if you all could just send Laura Lee a quick yes or no uh, to let her know whether or not you can see the screen that says Facebook, Understanding the Key Facebook Tools, and you can hear my voice if you could just do that really quickly. So we're all on the same page. Does that look good, Laura Lee? Looks good. Yep, getting okay, lots of yeses. Yes. <laughs> so I'm, I, I've taken this presentation, which is a training that we do for business owners, um, trimmed it down a bit so we can get through quite a bit of it in, um, in an hour or less. So um, I will move quickly. If you have any questions, please throw them at Laura Lee. If I cannot answer your question, I will certainly get the answer to your question. So Laura Lee already talked a little bit about me, just this 15 seconds. Um, Ken Sevick, I'm from Pittsburgh. I, I have been a business and executive coach for the last 13 years. Um, prior to that, I was an, ex, uh, an executive in corporate America with federated department stores. I've been a buyer, a manager, a executive, uh, operations executive, HR executive. Um, I've just done a lot in retail in the last 13 years. I've been coaching owners and CEOs uh, with a lot of success. I really love what I do. And that is one of the reasons why I'm here today. But let me give you um, a little uh, why I'm doing this, this presentation. Um, we have found that the vast majority of our business owners, large and small, um, when we are working with them on marketing, working with on systems, with money, all the things that we do is that we do as coaches, that one of the biggest challenges is, is social media. And they're coming to us and saying, who is who out there can teach us this? in a way that we can do it over a period of time or we don't have to, you know, drop a hundred thousand dollars to, can you help us with that? We spent two years looking for an organization or a web or social media company that could help us do that and bring some of these resources to our clients. And we did, we spent two years doing it. We found this company love for marketing. They're actually out of England and uh, we vetted them very heavily and they put together these massive online programs for business owners, and they've also designed some seminars. And what I've been doing as a coach is giving these to my clients and also teaching it locally to the business community, um, and it, it's been doing quite well. So I'm gonna share some of that with you today. 
So the big, I'm not sure why you're sitting on this, this event today, when maybe you're a Facebook expert and you're just looking to pick up some things to see what's happening. Maybe you're completely clueless. That's okay as well. But I do, um, well, some of you may even be looking for some additional help or support because I would imagine that some of you are already using people to help you with your social media. And maybe for some of you, it's not going well or you're not sure what you're getting and if it's actually valuable. Some of you have amazing people that are working for you. But we have all different types of people on the webinar today. Um, I'm going to, I'm not telling you to get rid of the person that you're using. I'm not even saying come and use love for marketing, but I'm gonna give you some options today. First of all, what's your plan? What is your plan for social media? Before I dive into Facebook, let's, let's be clear on this. You need to have a plan, uh, regardless of what level that you're at, on how you're going to execute your social media. Are you going to do Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram? Are you just gonna do one? Who's going to do it? What resources are you gonna put into it? But that is huge. So no matter how much info I share with you, if you can't put a plan together, you're gonna to struggle. I know one thing for sure, with all of my clients, the main reason they want social media and they want Facebook is to get leads. Because I believe all of us, unless your business is 100% referral and you are swimming in cash, you probably want to generate some leads. So that's really what this is designed to do, is to give you some of the basics, which by the way, we will cover mostly basics today because there's three different huge modules for doing this. But at least we're going to cover some things today that are going to help you get some more leads with your Facebook. So understanding the basics is, um, is key in getting started. But just a little bit of background, and I will not spend a lot of time on this. But it's surprising to me that how, how few people knew how powerful uh, Facebook really is and how much it means to what's going on out there. Um, you know, 1.49 billion people are on Facebook each month. And for those of you that have used WhatsApp, which is related to Facebook, it's an app that you can text and, and call for free. 800 million people on there, 700 million using the messenger, 300 million on Instagram. It, it's insane with how much is going on through Facebook, uh, Facebook alone and Facebook re related items. So for the businesses that are on the phone or on, on the computer and you're wondering, should I utilize Facebook? The answer is yes. Even if you're business to business and you hate Facebook, if you hate people that sit there and tell you that they're going to the restroom or they just got a new dog and they bought them a new chain with jewels on it and you, those people make you nuts, you still need to get involved with Facebook. There are too many eyes on it. And even though it may not be the person that's going to write you a check that is on Facebook, I will bet you that the people that they know and are related to are on Facebook. So it's a good reason to get involved at some level. If you take a look at the users, you know, if you take a look back in 2008 to, you know, 200, under 250 million users, users in quarter two, I'm sorry, 2009 today. And that's actually up through, um, 2015 was 1.4 billion. So it's growing exponentially. But this is, this is really intriguing as well. Look at the mobile users. You know, if you take a look at um, the second quarter of 14, 399, now it's almost at 1 billion people using their phones. So in case you haven't figured this out, and I, I'm pretty sure most business owners have, you know, the phone is where it's at. So question for you. And I'd be interested to see if, uh, if you could put in your text box and Laura Lee can text box and Laura Lee can read a few of these off. How many of you log into Facebook at least once a day? Take a moment while I take a sip of water and type in how many times you log into Facebook a day. We have one. No, I assume hmm. that means zero. <laughs> wow. Okay. So somebody that doesn't, what are some of the numbers? Um, four or five, two to a day, two to three times a week. I'm logged in most of the day, at least okay. 10 times. Okay. Yeah. So if we were to do five a day, 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if we were to do an average, 
Okay, for those that are wondering if, if the right people or enough people are on Facebook, there are very few people um, that are zeros when you come to an event or even in the business world, you're gonna find people that are logging in on a consistent basis. So it's worth getting, uh, getting into. You know, and if you were to estimate the time and money you spend on Facebook per, per month, you don't have to write this down, this is for a seminar. But I want you to think about that. You know, how much time, you may log in two times a day, but how much time are you actually spending on Facebook? When we do an average at a seminar, you know, the average is coming out a little over an hour a day because there are some people that are on a, an enormous amount of time and some people that only check it you know for a few minutes but you're talking about an hour a day on average for all of these business owners so those are a little some stats about facebook so hopefully if you aren't using facebook you've uh, considered the eyes that are on it and you're looking at it but there's some basic things you need to understand about facebook um, some key tools the first one is profiles Okay, profile, the, your profile is where you start everything from, okay? It is the foundation for all of the other tools which we'll talk about in Facebook, pages, groups, events, advertising. They're all run from a profile and we'll talk about the different profiles. Um, you can have a separate business profile and a personal profile, but it still has to be under your name, not a company name. Facebook has rules when it comes to setting up a profile. I cannot set up a profile as action coach business coaching. It has to be Ken Sevick because they do not allow a business to be the person. It actually has to be a person. Okay. Uh, people often try to use their profile, um, you know, as, as a business page. So that's the first thing, the first tool. Another tool is pages. You know, pages is another location within Facebook, um, another page, if you will where you can push all of your business messages. You know, it's where you talk about your business. You can show your brand. You can connect with communities. You know, you can uh, generate leads from there. You can advertise from pages. Um, you know, and the content, the one thing you have to know about your pages is the content is not always seen by your followers. Now that's different than it was in the past. Just because I set up a page for my business okay, in Facebook, and you like my page, that does not mean that every time I write something on my page, you're going to see it. It doesn't work that way. I think at one time it may have, but it doesn't work that way anymore. But a lot of companies, including mine, what I do is I have a personal profile that I went in and set up under, under Ken Sevick, and then I created a business page, which is a separate entity from my profile. And we'll talk a little bit more in detail about that, some, some, some do's and don'ts. Groups. Groups are great to create on Facebook because you can invite your existing contacts and people, people that are in those groups are going to see what you post. So you've created um, a community where you can manage existing customers and push messages out to people that you know are truly connected with what it is that you're saying. And if you have teams of people like an action coach globally, we have a Facebook page that is closed. It's our community. So when we want to push out messages to the whole community, instead of using tech or email, we can use the Facebook page and provided that you've logged into the Facebook page, you can see that. Um, groups are not generally good for lead generation. Um, if you think about it, it's a closed group and the people that are already in the group know, know you like you and trust you and know who you are, but it's really not the tool in Facebook that's used for leads. You, can you generate leads from groups? Sure. You can talk about upcoming products and things like that with the people you already know, but Facebook has other tools for generating leads. Events. Okay. Events is another tool um, that that Facebook has to put obviously to push out things that are going on that you want to advertise as far as a, uh, an event that is happening. Um, it, it's not as dynamic as Eventbrite and some other tools that are out there. So for those of you that run events where the like Eventbrite, where you can invite people and send messages out and schedule things through that Facebook, at least for now is not as dynamic. 
But um, I personally, even for the events that I do, I'm not using the event function. Um, I'm setting up landing pages and doing things differently. But there are people out there that are successfully using the events page. Advertising. Um, I am going to spend a little bit of time, a little bit more time later on this uh, because Facebook, uh, I'm just curious before I dig into this, how many of you out there, if you could type into your, your text box, um, how many of you are using Facebook advertising right now? So it looks like three, four people have said yes, a couple have said no, or not okay. yet. Not yet. Okay, the people that said yes, type in good or bad. How's it been for you? Bad. Ooh, <laughs> all right. That's the first one. Oh boy, a couple of bad ones. Okay, yeah. Here's, here's some things that, and, and I'll, I'll, circle, I'll circle around to this. For those of you that aren't using Facebook advertising right now, you owe it to yourself. You owe it to yourself to give it a try. Right now, I can't find a, a cheaper way to generate leads online than Facebook. For now, it is one of the most leveraged ways to find customers and to target customers. Their analytics are really strong and you can really focus down on who you want. And here's the big thing, the cost. When you do it right, the cost per lead is as low as anything that I can find. So, um, and, I, and I'm, I'm including with my clients. And we'll talk about the difference between using Google AdWords or using Facebook, but it's really powerful. Now, it may take some time to tweak and to really hit your audience the right way, but hopefully uh, through a couple of things we talk about today that, that will help you. But here's the thing, the first point, it's passive advertising. People stumble across your material. Think about this, when you have Google AdWords or LinkedIn, well, uh, I'm gonna back off of LinkedIn, LinkedIn has made, made some changes. Um, but when you use Google AdWords, the way people find you is, is through search, okay? They have to go online and type in something to find you. And the good thing about that is that you know they're looking for you and they're probably a warm lead. When it comes to Facebook, Facebook is, you, whatever it is you're advertising, is just being pushed out onto someone's feed because of the activity that they've had in the past or what their current likes are and it shows up in front of them. So it's just being, we'll call that passive. It's just passively being put in front of them and it's being put in front of an enormous amount of people and they get to look and make a decision of whether or not they wanna click on your ad. So that's a lot different thing than Google AdWords. Okay, um, there's a huge range of demographics and target. As you get into Facebook advertising, which we could probably do an entire we could do an entire session just on setting up advertising and things like that. Uh, you can see, you can get really narrowed down. You know, you can optimize it. You can change it on the fly for your conversions, you know, and uh, there's other tools within it that you can use that makes it really easy to jump from one ad to another. Again, so a lot of advantages. Apps. Facebook has apps. Here's the good thing about apps. Um, if you have a, if, if you can create an app, it just makes it easier for people to connect with your business. You know, it works alongside pages and you can do a lot of things through your apps. The, the drawback is, is that you need somebody with, with te tech, technological skills to create them for you. At least right now, unless somebody knows differently, there's not a way to go in and, and point and click and create an app within 15 minutes and make that your Facebook app. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if that happens in the future, but right now you need a developer to do that. You know, but it is a matter, it's easy for people to use. Okay, um, which of these tools, I'm just curious, which of the tools that we just covered, you know, groups, pages, advertising, apps, events, um, which ones are you using? Go ahead and type something into the box. And if you have any questions as well. Like a lot of people are using pages, pages and ads. 
Okay. Anybody using events? Groups, events, add. Okay. So some people are are use are using that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Good. So while you're sitting there, whether you're taking notes or not, what you should be doing is thinking about what are some other tools you would like to make use use of in your business and for what purpose. Uh, most almost all of these tools, maybe with the exception of apps are inexpensive or if not free to use. So as part of your plan, you know, maybe you haven't done advertising, you need to step into advertising or groups. What type of group can you create around your business? Or even this, how about a group around a product or a group for customer service where people can come in and that is your whole deal. We have a Facebook page, a group for customer service issues and people can share ideas. So there's a lot of cool things you can do with that. Okay, so let me back up into profiles. Um, profiles, yeah, th this is the, the basis of everything you need in Facebook. You cannot run, just a little side, you cannot run advertising from a personal profile. So if you set up a personal profile in Facebook, okay, you cannot run ads from there. You actually have to create a page um, in order to run ads. Okay, or you can create a regular business profile. But this is where you control all of your activities. But here's this, this last point on this slide. Control activities from one space and don't mix personal, personal and business. Um, I love talking about this at a live event because I asked the crowd and I'm asking all of you, how many of you share your political views, your religious views and everything with both your business and your personal audience. If you do, please type a yes into the box. Do we have some yeses? We got a no, we got a no way. <laughs> Heck, okay, okay. I don't um, see any yeses though. I am very glad to hear that. <laughs> you would be surprised. Um, so maybe they're just too afraid to say. <laughs> okay, so if you're one of those people and you know where I'm going with this that are doing that, um, there's two words that I'd like to share with you. Stop it. I mean, you do yourself, you do yourself no favors by taking the things that you like to talk about personally with your personal group and morphing that or sharing it in your business world. All it can do, it's not going to help your business. Now, if it has helped your business, you can send me an email and you can tell me all about it, kensevic at actioncoach.com. But you want to stay away from that. You want to keep business and personal separate. And we can talk about stories and everything, but we're going to move on. Okay. You know, um, it's best in your personal profiles, we talked about this, best not to post work-related topics. You know, you know, engage people, you know, in your business as your business. Now, if you have friends on your personal page that you think should be part of your business, by all means, invite them and send them a link to get connected with your business page. But don't share them within. Okay, I just asked you that question. So your business, uh, if you set up a business profile, Okay, and actually you can do this as pages as well, but if you set up a business profile as your own name, you know, you can host pages, groups, and adverts all from one ac account. Um, you know, you can, you can use this page very strategically. So um, anybody out there just have a business profile, like a separate uh, profile from their um, personal profile, or are most people using pages? Go ahead and type something in the box. So there's a question. Mm -hmm. um, looks like most people are using pages and then sharing through personal. Mm -hmm. um, but a quick question, please explain. Oops, got bumped up. <laughs> please explain again how to engage people on your business account. Do or do not use personal friends. Oh yeah, personal friends. Yes. Um, here was my point. If if you, let's say that you have a, a particular political view, whether it's left or right or center, whatever it may be, and um, you're currently 
you don't have a business page or a business profile, but you're running your business from a personal Facebook page and you're starting to share what you like and you don't like, I would argue, as I think most people would argue, that is not a healthy thing to do because there are people that could potentially be your customers that you're turning off because of where you stand. So what's the solution? Set up a business page or a separate profile that only speaks to your business and whatever you do in your business, whatever widget you deal with, and keep the conversations and the posts and the media focused on your business and keep your political and your personal views, keep them within your personal profile. On the other hand, if there are people within your personal profile that you have identified as people that you want in your business world, invite them to join your page. Did that answer your question? Great, I think so. Um, so a couple other questions just kind of around the difference between business profile and pages. Um, can you have two profiles in your name if you were to use one for personal and one for business? Um, that, you know what, I'm not, I think you might have to change something in your name to do that, but you can create a, a profile. As a matter of fact, I have, um, let me do this. Mm -hmm. um, I think I might have a, uh, a, a little how-to that I can send out on that. Oh, great. On business profiles and the difference. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Other questions? I think we're good for the moment. Okay, good. Yeah, so this is just a little bit more on this, on business, when, when you have a, a page or a profile, it's easy to invite people to groups, events, and just you know promoting what it is that, that you do. Um, I was thinking, this is, this is something, uh, as I'm going through a presentation, I like to just share with people. Um, Right now, for those of you that are setting up business pages or looking to do that, um, I think it's really interesting to share what's going on with the present landscape um, as you're setting it up and, and you're looking at things that you want to do mobile. If you take a look at the pictures on the right, if you look at the inauguration of the Pope in 2005, and then you take a look down at the inauguration in 2013, do you notice some differences? I mean, take a look. Take a look at the number of phones in, in screen. So uh, this is the world that we're in, and Facebook is still the app that most people connect with on their phone. You know, people want on their phone in real time, okay, they want to be able to make recommendations. Now, people want to share video on Facebook Live. Why wouldn't you want to do that with your business? Um, I don't know if we have any plumbers or any HVAC people out there. And you're, you're out on the job and you, you take care of a customer and do something really amazing. What's to keep you from taking your phone and shooting a quick little video to say, hey, we just took care of this problem. This is something that we see every day, all the time. You, you need to do these three things and this is how we took care of it. And you shoot a quick little video and you post it to Facebook. I mean, think about the people that see that and how quickly that gets out there. You know, people are expecting to see things. They're sharing content constantly, you know, through all their social channels. And people are checking you out on Facebook as well. So I always like to swing back to the, what's happening in the, in the climate. Okay. Um, how to communicate with customers on Facebook once you're set up. Um, we know that people are inquiring about services and products. They're buying service and products um, through Facebook. They're researching people. Um, I don't know how many of you, um, I don't know if you know this, but people are checking you out via your Facebook page when they're, when they're looking to buy from you. you know, so whether or not it's up to date makes a big difference. You know, um, people are, are recommending service to the other. They're looking for discounts. So for those of you that already have Facebook page pages and you haven't used them or you haven't, you just haven't engaged with them in a while, your customers are finding it, okay? And maybe that's not such a good thing. 
because they're doing a search based on the short descriptions you've put into your originally into your Facebook page and they're finding you on the web and the first thing they're clicking on is your Facebook page that the last post was in 2014. So keep that in mind um, if you're getting back into this game or if you're setting up your Facebook page. You know, getting involved and continually posting is important. Can I, I have uh, one other question, Ken, and I think it might be related to what you just said. Um, the question is, if we already have a business page through pages, mm -hmm. how can we set up a separate business page without losing what is established from pages? You set up a second page? Um, a separate page. A separate page without losing all the analytics. Mm -hmm. um, you know what? I will get you the answer to that. Okay. Okay. So setting up, setting up a second page without losing all, I'm going to assume, but without losing all the analytics and everything. Mm -hmm. Great. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And again, I'm sorry. Um, I, I know a fair amount about Facebook, but I'm not the absolute guru, but I do. I have connections with the gurus that I work with and I will make sure that they get you the answers. Okay. Wonderful. And I'll follow up also with everybody that's on the webinar today with answers to these questions. So yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, so as we're talking about posting and being able to be more engaged, there's something you have to realize that posts are being seen by less people. Some of you may have noticed that. It has to do with Facebook's um, algorithms. What's been happening is, is that when it used to be that if somebody that liked you, if somebody that liked you, you would see their posts all, or they would see your posts all the time, that is no longer. Facebook is basing it, and we'll talk about this, they're basing it on some other things now. What's happening is the organic reach, and uh, uh, excuse me if I, if I um, insult anybody, but what organic is, is, is your rankings or what you see naturally because of activity is no longer being seen as, as much. Uh, Facebook did this by design. And if we were doing a seminar, I'd ask everybody to answer why. Well, I'll just tell you why. Because what they want is they want more people advertising. Because if you're not being seen organically, just like in Google, the way to get seen, one of the quickest ways to get seen is, is to advertise and to boost, you know, uh, boost your posts, which is actually like a form of advertising. Um, or continually to post a lot more, a lot more. And th they also want that. So be aware of that. You know, their, their algorithms, you know, are changing constantly. And I've seen a number that they have over 10,000 different algorithms that they use. Whatever the number is, this is just a, an overview of how Facebook is choosing what people see. And it's based on interest, post, creator type and recency so the um, interest okay is is basically how much interest you know the the post that people have and whatever that that category that topic is um, that facebook knows everything that you search for if you're f searching for watches or bikes you know, cycles, I'm a cyclist and I'm looking for cyclists or I talk with cyclists, Facebook knows that. So the people that talk about what you're talking about, they will have a tendency to see things first. Your post against other users. If there are other people posting about watches and, and uh, bicycles, how does yours rank against theirs? How often are they posting? You know, that's going to play into, the, into whether or not you see it. You've been posting for only a week. It's the first time you advertise, but there's somebody out there that has been posting consistently. Bicycle Magazine, they're going to get preference. That's the creator. Type, um, I'm pretty sure most of you have noticed some video on Facebook. Well, photos have been shown to do better than text. Videos have been shown to do better than photos. So video is huge. Now I'll be completely transparent. I just ran an event last month and I did both a photo and I actually did a video as well. 
and actually the photo did better. Now there could be other reasons why, but all of the stats that are out there for people that are using, you know, just basic photos or videos from their phones or whatever are um, actually ranking higher. And recency, how new is the post? So if you've had a post that's been out there for three weeks or two, three, it's not going to show up like the other ones do as, as much. So um, post a lot, uh, post consistently, use photos, use videos, um, and you will start to see your information showing up in feeds organically more often. Ken, there is a question about how, how often to post. So you say post a lot, is that like several times a day or? You, you win the prize for the most asked question of all time. <laughs> okay, whoever asked that question. You know, it, all the, it really, it does depend on your audience and the business that, that you're in. Um, I have um, businesses that post daily on Facebook, right? at least I can get, um, they post daily on a number of different social media forums and I'm completely okay with that. Uh, like a Darren Hardy or somebody that's getting a lot of value. I actually look forward to those posts daily. But um, let's say if Macy's posted to me every day, I wouldn't like that. So what you have to determine in your business is what's going to be a good rhythm for you. And I can tell you where I start at. And I have somebody that does my posts for me. Um, I would do, I would start, if it were me, I would start slow and I would do three times a week. See what kind of response you're getting. Make sure that you can post good content, relevant content three times a week, and then start testing and measuring. What happens when you go to four days a week? Do you start getting more likes? Do you start engaging more people? Or do you start getting people like dislike or unliking you? So I think everybody needs to play that game. Um, again, I'm just curious, uh, since we, we haven't done this in a minute or two, how many times, please type into the box, how many times are you posting a week for those of you that are currently using Facebook? Three to five, six, rarely every three days. Cool. I'm curious, the business that the person put six, what business are you in? tea shop oh that is so cool like tea mm-hmm oh love and then it 10 times a week from another business owner who um has a um like a, a health food bar company yeah mm -hmm. yeah see there's things i think there are things or new promos or things that are coming out that if, if you know if your tea shop was near me I, i'm assuming it isn't near me but uh, if it was i would probably be okay with seeing that i wouldn't get irritated at it but again you need to find in you know, determine what your audience likes and what they're all about. Okay. Um, have you noticed a decline in the amount of people your posts reach lately? So those of you, question you need to ask yourself, those of you that have been on Facebook for a while, have you noticed the reduction? I think most people have, unless you've really been hitting it hard and doing some advertising. Okay. Um, I love this stat. There are over 40 million active small business pages on Facebook, 40 million, okay? Only 2 million of these businesses pay for advertising. So what does that mean to you? Those two things that I just put up, please type that. I know I'm having you type a lot in the box because I'm not talking to you. What does that mean to you? Those two stats, type in the box, what does that mean? 40 million people, 40 million pages on Facebook, 2 million of them, Two million of those businesses are paying for advertising. What does that say to you? Let's see. Most people are not paying for advertising. You got, yeah. There's no need to pay for ads. People don't have faith in fa Facebook or Facebook advertising. Mm, oh, that's an interesting answer. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, here's, here's what I would encourage you to, whoops, as a takeaway. Um, that number when this was created has probably doubled. Wow. The takeaway should be when there are 40, 40 million active small business pages. Okay. And let's say a couple of the, some of those businesses have two pages or they've created different things. Um, 
that is a small amount of people that are actually marketing on Facebook. As a small business, that should scream opportunity to you. That is one of the reasons why Facebook advertising right now is so cheap because they're trying to build that to a massive, to a massive amount like Google has done. And that's how Google runs their business. That right now you are in at the beginning and it is really inexpensive as a co- When I say inexpensive as a cost per lead, it's generally really expensive or we could talk about cost per reach uh, for Facebook. So. Um, if you take a look at the screen that I have up here, um, this shows you where people are getting their customers from. Okay. Um, whether it's B to C business to consumer or business to business, the argument was always, okay. That if you were business to business, okay, that LinkedIn was the place to go. And that still holds true. But if you take a look at Facebook and LinkedIn, and you look at that, um, that sort of reddish purple bar, you'll see that LinkedIn uh, is still higher, but look where Facebook is. It's gaining very quickly. Um, B to C, business to consumer, for those of you that serve the, the consuming public, uh, Facebook, okay, is huge. It's absolutely huge. Um, and you can see some of the other stats. There are fans, you know, why would people like your page? Why would you go out and advertise? And as one of your offers, just ask people to like your page. Because here are reasons why people like people's pages, like your business page. Look at 49% is to support the brand that they like. And then I like the second one, the second one, to get a coupon or a discount. People that are liking Facebook pages, they are, they are loyal when you do the right things, offering coupons, offers of some sort. They love it. And it's so easy to do, you know, and they become, you know, one of your, one of your loyal customers that you'll be able to reach out. So why not get uh, involved? If you look at 41% to receive regular updates, you can update your customers quickly. Run contests, you know, share, share good experiences of what's happened. A lot of good reasons. For becoming a fan. Here's what consumers expect, okay, when they like your page. They want access to exclusive events or sales. So as you go and you build your strategy and say, you know what, over the next three months, we're going to go from 500 likes on our page to 5,000. That's fantastic, but if you want to keep them, you need to know these numbers. 58% of those people want exclusivity to events or sales, and it's easy to do, okay? They want promotions through Facebook, okay? They want to be able to post updates, you know, about, their, about the brand in their personal news feed. You know, they want to be able to engage. They want to be able to share the stuff that you have with their family. These are all things that you need to take into consideration. But what about when people do not like, do not like you and give you the thumbs down? Why is that? Well, you've gone out and you've posted to them three times a day, seven days a week, and you're bombarding them with ads and messages. That's when people start to uh, unlike you or dislike you on Facebook. Okay. Um, When you ask them for all of their personal information, I know you want all that for your database and for your CRM but people do not like to give tons and tons of personal information. Get as little as you need and you'll be better off. You know, um, when you start pushing stuff to their friends and somehow you connect with their friends on Facebook or see, see, uh, see a conversation and pushing stuff, I think that's much tougher to do now. That's a turnoff. So these are some things that you need to uh, have a handle on. So question to you. Do you provide exclusive offers, events, or competitions to your audience? If you don't, why not? That's what people want on Facebook. You don't have to give the farm away. You can do something simple. You can do something fun as an event. You can do something that maybe you were planning to do an event or an offer, you know, two months from now, 
and maybe you can test it with a certain segment of your audience on Facebook and see how it goes, but make it exclusive to them. A lot of fun things that you can do to generate more leads. So come up with one exclusive promotion, one exclusive event, and one exclusive competition for your Facebook audience. That should be a takeaway, something that you can do, and give it a test. Ken, there are a couple questions that popped it in about um, B2B companies and how to incorporate promotions. Um, business to business? Yeah. Yeah, here's one. Okay, um, you're a trucking company, or let's say you're a company that provides service to other trucking companies. Uh, you know, maybe you do HVAC for them. A promotion that you could do on Facebook during a slow time is say, bring in your truck for your, your regular maintenance, your, your 45 point inspection, bring it in between this date and this date and get fill in the blank. Doesn't have to be a discount, it could be a free t-shirt, it could be an add-on that costs you almost nothing, but they have a ton of value. Does that help? Or did I answer your question? It's a good example. Um, one person in particular is SEO, search engine optimization. One said, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, what was, there was a question on SEO? Oh, yes, yep. Um, with that same B2B question. How would, um, would state the question again. Oh, just how, how a um, business to business company could use Facebook prom or could use promotions through Facebook um, to generate leads. And then the particular industry, or, you know, business is SEO. Oh, their business is mm -hmm. SEO. Hmm. Oh boy, you put me on the spot. Let me think. Uh, you're an SEO person. Um, what could you offer? I'm assuming, I don't know what you're, I'm assuming your margins are pretty good. Uh, in the services that you offer, since it is a service, you could offer um, business to business people some some advantage to your your platinum package, mm -hmm. or take something from your platinum package and put it in the gold package during a certain period of time, you know, and frame it that way. Again, don't give away. Um, I'm not about giving away. I'm not about discounting. But if you can give away a product or a service to your core customers via Facebook, you know, for a limited amount of time, I think that's an easy, fun test to do. Cool, cool. There, you know, there are a couple other um, just kind of questions about, about specific promotional ideas. And I think what I might do is start a discussion in the alumni network, if you all are okay with that following this webinar. Um, Ken can chime in there and you might be able to help each other out with some promotion ideas too. So we'll take it over there after this webinar. Yeah. Yeah. The promotion stuff is fun. Cool. Okay. Um, boy, we're getting tight on time. Let me, I'm, I'm going to pick up the pace just a little bit here. Okay. Um, when creating pages, here's some basics that some of you already know, but I think for those of you that are rethinking your strategy or redoing, you need to understand this. There are different page types, six different page types, but the two really important ones I'm gonna argue are your local business or place and company organization or institution. Those are the two main ones. And there's a reason why, okay? Um, and on this page, I want you to focus on these two columns. Whoops, I can't do that. Okay, on the companies and organizations and local businesses, those two feeds. Here's what you get, okay, when you use those two profiles and the differences between them. They both give you a short description, which we'll talk about. Okay. Both of them allow you to link to your website. Uh, you can get emails through them, phone address, but the local one allows you to put a map in. Okay. Allows people to check in. And here's the big one, local or ratings and reviews. Okay. If you have a business and most of us do, if you have a business where people can post ratings and reviews on your site, you want to use local businesses. And there's a lot of advantages to that. A lot of it. I mean, if you think about when you go to, um, when you go to book a trip or you go to a new restaurant and look at Yelp, so many of us are looking at ratings. Okay. And this is, that's the one that you want to use. So company, 
organization or local businesses. If you want to learn more about brands and whether you should go to brands, uh, another discussion for another day. But I can tell you all of my clients, I have a number of different clients at different levels. They're on one of these two pages. Now, if you don't want reviews, okay, and you don't want to deal with that, then companies and organizations is the way to go. The short description when you're setting up your page, okay, is really important. Here's an example of Tesla. Okay, in Tesla's uh, page, they set up and their short description always on ludicrous mode, maker electric, electric cars, renewable energy storage, join the um, uh, revolution. Well, what's happening is, is that Google is pulling from your Facebook analytics or from your Facebook uh, back end, the description to move things up into the Google ratings. I know some of you may have noticed this, but you do a search for a company. And um, I just did it this morning with, with a new business. And I did a search for them. And the first thing that came up was not their website, but their Facebook page. So it's important that when you go in and you put in the descriptions that, that you know, you're writing about what it is that you do and it's clear to everybody and it speaks to you know, how exciting your business is. And you can see down at the bottom, uh, when you look at Tesla's, Tesla's Facebook on Google, it comes up almost identical. Always on ludicrous, it has the numbers and it says always on ludicrous mode. Okay, so short description, very important for SEO. Okay, so profile pictures, just let me get this out of the way. I realize that the next two or three photos um, that I show you, the, the Facebook banners, they don't look like this anymore. I know that because Facebook has changed it a number of times. But there's a point I want to make here when you set up your banner images. Okay, you certainly in the small box. You definitely want to use your logo when you, in, in many, many cases. But the actual profile picture that you used, at least from what I've seen and what uh, the love for marketing has seen, is not utilized very well. There's a lot of different things that you can do with it in setting up your banner image. Now, here's one from Mari Smith. Mari, when, when social media was really breaking out, Mari was one of the, one of the top dogs out there. Now you can't do everything that she's done on here, but I want you to take a look at what she's included, okay, in her Facebook banner, okay? Now you can get, you can, uh, she has a click here to register and all of that. You can't really do that and create that via Facebook right now, but you can certainly put a copy of a publication that you've done in your banner, okay? You can do things with the, the photo that scream this is what we do and how we do it, okay? Uh, you can do some things about, you can direct people to certain locations. Okay, we'll talk about the call to action button in just a minute. I love this one. This entreport, the whole Facebook banner is about the fact that they wanna service people through their Facebook page. So their banner has their hours on it for customer support, okay? It's pretty clear what it is they're trying to do. What is it that you're trying to do? How about this one? You know, this company, instead of having a picture of their building, by the way, that drives me nuts. For those of you that are doing it, I'm sorry if I upset you. But you have a picture of your building and you're not selling your building. Look what this company did. They put the three things that they do. Time, sa you know, time saved, content provided, reach boosted. Save two hours daily on Facebook. And it's done in the banner. And then you can see their logo over there. This one I think is fantastic. If you can do it, do it. Put somebody's testimonial in your banner. Simple. Now you, you might have to use Photoshop or get a picture taken, but these are some small changes that you can make that are gonna attract people and keep them on your page. Here's one right here. Uh, you know, with, with the new styles, it's pretty, pretty, pretty obvious. You know, they're a, uh, a travel company and you know they've made it very clear that this is what they do I think I missed one back no that's it so I'm um, showing you some examples make a note of the changes that you need to make with your Facebook banner your photo can you improve it do you have a picture of something that has nothing to do with what you do if you do change it
call to action buttons. Uh, right now, okay, learn more is the top click rate um, performer. So in other words, on your, on your Facebook banner, there you have an option uh, for a call to action where somebody can do something. And I highly recommend that you utilize that. Depending on your business and what you do will determine what it is that you, that you want to put on there. But I can tell you, though, if, you're, if you think that people are going to come to your Facebook page for the first time and just book an appointment with you because you're a consultant, um, I know this firsthand. That's not going to work. But if you give people the ability just to start a relationship, and let's face it, that's what social media is. We're starting a conversation, a relationship. Eventually, you may close business, but this is about a starting a relationship. Give them the opportunity to learn more. You know? Now, if you're running a promo or you're one of those businesses that it makes sense to, to log on and sign up for something or register, so be it. But learn more is the way you want to do it. Do you have a call to action in your banner that complements both the button and the image? Okay, make a note of what type of call to action you want to use and why. Uh, video, I won't spend a lot of time about this except that you need to do it. Um, you know, it helps, it, video helps trust. It makes your page look better. They now have thumbnails. I mean, I don't know if some of you have noticed that um, on some sites, when you see a video, you know, it's always a picture of where the video starts and it might be somebody like rubbing their nose or has a goofy look on their face. Facebook gives you the ability to pick your thumbnail so that when people are looking at it before they play it, it actually is a decent looking photo. So I think that's a pretty cool uh, feature that they have. But video, if you haven't figured this out yet, video works. And I just spent a whole session talking to video S experts and even they'll tell you videos from your phone work really well. There is a point that you need to transition to professional video for some businesses, but your phone is an amazing tool. You have an iPhone 7 or something like that, you can just nail the video. Custom URL. You have to have over 25 fans to create a vanity URL. Now, most of you have a URL, and you, know, you can type into the box if I'm wrong, but most of you have your name um, as part of your URL, and that makes sense for most of us. But if you would like to have a URL that has something about your business in it, has the name of your business in it, you can make that change. Um, you know, by doing that, if you're in, let me pick an industry, you're in, you sell um, specialty Italian goods, or let's say you're an olive oil business, you could change something in your Facebook address to say something like, uh, pure olive oil, extra virgin, something that people search for, you can put that into your Facebook address and it'll help your search results. It's easier for the audience to find you. You know, you can, and if it's your company name, you should own it. Here's the thing. Look at the last point. You can only change your Facebook URL once. So if you like your name in there, mine's Facebook, you know, Ken Sevick at Facebook, uh, I want my name in there because that's how I'm identified. You know, don't mess with it, but you only get one chance. Does your Facebook currently have a vanity URL that you're happy with? If not, it's easy to change, but you can only do it once. Here's the page. If you want to go in and um, make, make the change, pretty simple, facebook.com slash username, or you can go through the clicking through your, your um, you can click through to find it. Okay, reviews. For those of you that are afraid to have reviews or don't want to have reviews, um, you may want to reconsider that because of the power of reviews. Uh, we could have a pretty healthy conversation, and I usually do in an event, about what do you do when somebody, you know, takes a crap on you, says something nasty. I think it's pretty, I think most experts would agree that you can really turn that into something positive but you need to answer people. You need to engage and, and you know, service them online and let people, seeing you do, let people see you do it. And by the way, you may have noticed this, especially those of you that have been on Facebook for a while. 
if you have a lot of reviews and comments, you know, and even if they're everywhere from three to five stars, and then all of a sudden somebody jumps in and says something really nasty, many times other people will beat them up for you, which is always a good feeling. And then you can go and respond to them. But reviews are a good thing to have on your Facebook. Insights. I'm surprised about how many people don't know about insights. On your business page or on your pages, click on insights. Oh, it's awesome. It's all the analytics of what's happening, how, you know, how people are engaged with you. And you, it breaks down all the stats. And one of the most exciting things, the things that I like, you can pick, I think it's three, not five. You can pick three of your competitors' pages and see how they're compared to yours, how many people are liking them, how many people are engaged. I'm not sure if you all knew about that, but whoever your top three competitors are, go in and put their Facebook page in here and you can track to see how they're doing. I think it's just a great idea and it makes it very competitive. So that's on your insights page. Take some time um, on insights and uh, you know, take a look at that and go and add everything that you can on insights. Yeah, this is some of the stuff that I added. You know, you can benchmark against uh, other people, see what content is really happening out there. Okay, are you looking at competitors' pages for post and for inspiration? Hey, um, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you track your competitors' Facebook pages, especially if it's a lot better than yours? I mean, do market research, or in other words, steal stuff. Not the actual content, but ideas on what to do. Are they running promotions? Are they posting 12 times a day and getting people to talk about them all the time? There's the answer to your question if you should post all the time. Know what your competition is doing. Okay, who are the competitors that you need to watch? So, um, I'm sorry I'm over about three minutes. I apologize for anybody's time that I stole, but it's all about getting more leads. Uh, there's a lot of different levels and a lot of things to learn about Facebook. If you are interested in learning about that and you'd like to do it online at your own pace, there's something that we have that's called Online Marketing Club. If you're interested in an online marketing club, please just send me, uh, send me an email or a note. I don't know if we want to do that online, Larley, um, through, through the thing. It's probably better if you do it uh, at kensevic at actioncoach.com. K-E-N-S-E-V-I-C-K, -E if you're interested in that. What we'll do is we'll set up a meeting. It might not be with me, but it'll be with an expert on this, and, and we'll walk you through what it's about. It's basically, it'll take you through all the different types of social media, and you get online trainings that you always have access to with workbooks, um, and there's different pricing structures depending on what, what, what it is that you want to do. So I won't go through all that right now, but if you have interest in that, uh, please you know, connect with me and I can get you set up with, with the right people. But hopefully you received a couple tidbits today and I got you thinking about uh, what's happening out there with Facebook and some things that you can do. Yeah. Okay, I took a break. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ken. This was wonderful. Um, an incredible amount of just really valuable information. Um, we did get to most people's questions, but again, I will start a discussion in the alumni network. So if anyone does have additional questions or thoughts that you want to share, um, ideas you want to brainstorm with each other, we can, we can continue there.